season. Now he goes for 14 in a row. He's a true champion. He's an awesome, awesome rider. to Edison Field in Anaheim, California. A capacity crowd on hand for the 2002 season opener. Round one of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speedstick. And hi everybody, Terry Gannon along with former Supercross champion David Bailey. When you think about rivalries in sports, you think maybe Duke, North Carolina, Ohio State, Michigan, Tiger against the field every week. Now, Supercross has its own version in 2002. McGrath against Carmichael, and it may be, David, the most celebrated rivalry in the 28-year history of the sport. This is a good one. I'll, I'll tell you what makes it really good right off the bat is the fact that Jeremy, back in 96, ran off 13 win wins in a row. I never thought that would be equal. Nobody did. But Carmichael matched it last year. With a win here tonight, he could extend that to 14 and own the record. But it's fitting that they're tied because they're so similar in other areas. Their preparation, for instance, they're both in the best shape of their life. They both have the equipment to win on. They both have won here in this building, and they both have a Supercross title. The difference is Jeremy has seven Supercross titles. <laughs> That's not bad, Yeah, huh? not bad. And for Ricky, he hasn't lost a race, a Supercross race, since round three uh, last year. So this is as good as it gets. Yeah, the last time Carmichael lost a Supercross race, it was January 20th. This is an ABC 7 News special weather advisory. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dan Henry with a winter. Ricky Carmichael, he is for real. This kid can win right off the bat, and he expects to win the championship in his first try. However, he is mortal. The second qualifying heat trouble right off the start. And there he is in the Fuchsia. Oh, Stewart goes down. He'd have to try to come back. It was David Pingree, number 39, who would win that qualifying heat. But Stewart able to make his way back up. Gosler won. Chris Gosler won the first qualifying heat. Pingree won the second. And the top names who will go on to race in the main event. Speed stick trap map, what they're facing here, David. Well, what they see is the same thing we saw in your years past. The big triples out there on the outside. The rhythm section here before the finish line jump. But the whoops, two sections of them, those are going to really take their toll on the guys tonight. The track here in Anaheim, the season opener. A look at some of the guys who will vie for the 250 title. Mike LaRocco, number five, off to a great start in the qualifying so far. Ah, this is the place. But he's more in tune with motorsports than Yamaha. Speed stick, power of nature for protection that smells good. And Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. On a gorgeous night here in Anaheim, California, we welcome you back to Edison Field, EA Sports Supercross, presented by Speed Stick. Round one, about to get underway, the 125 main event. The Honda starting grid, take a look at some of these names. Roderick Tain, one of those to keep your eye on. Brock Sellers, another guy who's always in the thick of things, David. Also, James Stewart, you see there towards the bottom of the list. There he is on the far outside. Hasn't been easy getting here. Had to go to the last chance qualifier. All eyes on him, though. The 30-second board sideways. They're off and racing under the lights in Anaheim. And the race for the Powerade hole shot. It's number 39, David Pingree, who gets the Powerade hole shot. He's off to a great start here in the main event. And it was a great big pile up in the first corner that involved James Stewart, but he was the first guy to break free from that, so his starts have not been good this evening, but this is better than it was in his heat race. David Pingree, number 39. He finished eighth last season in a 125 class. A guy who's had three wins throughout his career. Yeah, I'm really surprised with the way Pinkery's riding. I've been watching him in the 
some of the preseason stuff. I know he's in shape. He seemed confident, but I didn't really see him put in a lot of hard laps like I saw some of the other guys doing. And he's putting it together here, so he knew something I didn't see. That's Roderick Tain, number 27, who is right behind him, the 23-year-old from Arras, France. France has produced a number of very good Supercross riders, including Nathan Villeman. Tain will have a little bit of an advantage through the whoop section and on some of the real slippery parts of this track through the night. You see the shiny spots of dirt right there. Those are very slippery, just like riding on ice, and that's where that 254 stroke power package really hooks up. The whoop section, which, as you mentioned, is going to really tell the tale in this race. Tane behind Rock Sellers, number 18, trying to make a move now on Tane. Can't get there. I really felt like that the bikes that had a little bit more power in the field were going to have a big advantage to the whoop section, especially since they're back-to-back -to -back tonight. The KTM seem to be the most powerful bikes out there. There they are, running first and third, sandwiching that powerful four strokes so these guys definitely do have the advantage you can see it now rock sellers the 23 year old from sherrodsville ohio you got all the young kids coming up but it's not enough for the veterans Here's james stewart there he is and they were very quick to tell us that is fuchsia not pink by the way <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is he can pull it off James Stewart, only 16 years of age. In fact, he only turned 16 just a few weeks ago on December 21st. He would be the youngest rider ever to win one of these events in the 125 class if he would be able to pull it off here. Look at that. Some aggressive riding from Sellers to get into second place, Tang. Uh, dished a little bit of that out earlier this afternoon in one of his heat races to Danny Smith and has not joined the front runners yet. He gets There's a little bit of the back right there. There's Tane, number 27. Sellers, number 18. The numbers change from year to year, although some are able to keep their number the same. Anybody inside the top 20 and keep their number. For instance, Sellers kept number 18. Pingree changed his from 35 to 39. Stewart was able to move up in position since we left him last. Sellers right by Pingree. And Kane battling right now with Pingree too as they go high to the finish line area. Lap four, 15. And while we're watching this battle, the guy that's going to make it all change is the kid we talked about at the top of the show. James Stewart has joined this group out front. Stewart did all he could do to keep the bike on two wheels through the first corner. And the crowd can sense it. There he is. Number 259, currently in fifth place, but moving up little by little. Remember only lap 4 of 15. He came from last except for the two people that were still stuck in that first corner. Clear up to this front battle. Stewart from Haines City, Florida. Won 11 national championships as an amateur. And Sellers was off the bike a moment ago. Now he's back on. But that'll cost him. Cost him the lead. He dropped all the way back. There's Brandis getting around now. Number 44. Stewart's lap times are the fastest so far. Gosler turned a 56, number 90. He was in this group. There he is. And Stewart bested that with a 55. Two seconds faster than Pingree. What a battle. Pingree, Tane, Gosler. Numbers 39, 27, and 90. Your top three right now. Five laps into this main event. And what Seller, what uh, Stewart had to do, rather, was run a preliminary qualifier this afternoon just to get into the program. Team number 27. Gosler number 90. Tane goes for the block pass, and Gosler gets a ball. Meanwhile, Stewart back there, who I was about to say, has written more laps than anybody here tonight. He had to ride a lap chance qualifier.
available for this 125 division. As you've been able to watch him as he makes a move right here. Look at James Ford go, the 16 year old. Now you see how he's looking to his right? He's looking at the leader. He doesn't care about anybody in between. Just where is that leader? How far out of reach is it? That's confidence. And Roderick Tain has got to feel the pressure right on his wheel. Watch through the loose. This is where Stewart is so strong. There are those who have said over the past year, <laughs> Stewart goes right by Roderick Tain, that he may be, before it's all over, the best to ever compete in this sport. From what I've seen right now, Terry, I have to agree. Now, we, we didn't think that anyone would come along and, and do what Jeremy's done, and Carmichael is approaching it. This kid came out of the amateur ranks and has beaten all Carmichael's records. But the potential is there. So young and he rides so fluid. Makes all this look very easy and stylish. Chris Gossler with the lead right now, but look who is right behind him. The 16-year-old from Haines City, Florida. James Stewart had trouble earlier today, had trouble at the start, but he is pressing the leader right now. And here comes his, his weapon. He's able to jump to the outside. Gossler's taking the same line, but section. A little over anxious right there. He knew that was a good section for him. He's trying to set himself up for the next set of loops where he could make the pass. Finally gets it going and back on the bike to get it started. And off and riding. Oh, what a horrible break for the youngster. He's tasted the soil quite a few times tonight. He's just so close to Gosler right there. He really can't focus on the line. He hits a bump with his front wheel. It just stops him. Looked like he made contact with Gosler too, which helped make him come to a complete stop. This is about the fourth time he's hit the dirt tonight. And it's just halfway right now. So he can still work his way back up, but getting back into the lead is going to be tough. It's number 90, Chris Gosler, the youngster from Juniper Hills, California with the lead about midway through this main event in the 125 class. Back to Anaheim in a moment. Down the dyno. Although occasionally our engineer will put the bike through his own standard evaluation. The Grin Test. Demo ride a Buell American motorcycle. Visit Buell.com for the nearest dealer. Tonight, 9, 8 central. Sydney brings in the new year with a bang. You're amazing. And a shocking discovery. I knew that it was time. A new alias. Then at 10, 9 central. You're here because you know something. A minister. Back at Edison Field here in Anaheim, EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick. The 125's main event continues. Number 90, Chris Gosler, still has the lead. Don't forget Monday night. Join Al, Dennis, and Dan for the season finale of Monday Night Football. It's the Vikings and the Ravens coaching change for the Vikings, of course. That's Monday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC. Well, it looks like Gosler is finally clean sailing right now because Tane back there behind him, he got bumped around so much. There you see him, number 27. He may be starting to settle in and go, you know what? Let me just be smart here. It's the first race of the season. Hang on to second. But Stewart, who went down, is already back up to fourth, and he's cut that deficit from the lead down to four seconds from what it was. Well, you've talked about the fact that he can make up ground in a hurry. As we look at the hot Honda stopwatch interval, Gosler with that lead over Roderick Tain right now. There is number 27, Tain. The first of 16 events in all on the season in Supercross right now. Let's go down and check in with Davey Coombe. Well, a lot of guys down here talking about James Stewart's big crash, but guys, he has gotten back up to move his way in the fourth. Keep this in mind. Fourth place is where Travis Pastrana finished in his first Supercross race. And when Ricky Carmichael had his first race in 1997, dead last. All right, Davey, thanks. Travis Pastrano, of course, now in the 250 class, but only 18 years of age still, and he's the man everyone was looking to to be the future star of this sport. Now, he has definitely made up time on everybody else. Gosler is holding his own out front. He's, he's so far in front, I don't see that Stewart is going to be able to have the time to catch him. But what a ride. Christopher Gosler, whose dad is 
a member of the Supercross family. It's a technician for Team Honda. Ezra Luft, mechanic. Two laps to go here in the 125 main event. Gosler looking very solid and under control. This kid's got a huge smile. If he can hang on to this, we're going to get to see an even bigger one. I can't imagine how ecstatic he's going to be and his dad. He's able to hang on to this. See, Tain is back there within striking distance, but he's not racing Gosler right now. Looks like he's just trying to hang on to second and hope for something to happen to Gosler. Gosler's lead is a little more than two seconds right now over Roderick Tain. Under the lights in front of a sold out capacity crowd here at Edison Field. The white flag is out the final lap. This is the most steady, the most consistent laps I've ever seen Gosler put in. He's always had speed, but he, he looks a lot more like Stewart has looked in this main event before. Going down, making mistakes. He has been mistake free here. One more time through that loop section. It's the only thing that can really reach up and grab it. Can you hold your breath a little bit as you go through that. <laughs> Look at that. He came to a stop. Uh oh. There's Tane, number 27, goes right by him. Roderick Tain able to take the lead in the first loop section. Now through the second one, and they both go down. Gosler and Tain down through the loop section. Uh, here comes Travis Preston. He'll take over the lead. Number 29, Travis Preston. Those other riders were lapped wider. So there is your leader as he approaches the finish line. Unbelievable. It looks like Stewart is going to pick up second. Travis Preston, number 29, takes advantage of the late race mistake by Gosler and then Tane. And he's looking around saying, number one? Yeah, number one. Preston captures the title here in Anaheim. What a finish to his first 125 main event of the season. Preston, the 23-year-old from Santa Ana, California. I'll tell you what, there's Stewart coming up to congratulate him. Nobody can appreciate it ain't over till it's over better than Preston. The only other Supercross he won was in Houston last year when Grant Langston threw it away with a half a lap to go. That's what these guys just did. You see the momentum that Gosler had. As soon as Tain started wandering to his left, it was over. Nowhere to go. Gosler had the trouble first in the first whoop section. And that's when Tain passed him on the inside. Unbelievable. Looked like Gosler had a, a definite run on him going down the left, but Tain lost his momentum and wandered right into his line. Tain ends up finishing fifth. Well, Stewart certainly had a wild ride. James Stewart, the 16-year-old, had trouble, worked his way all the way back up and is able to finish second in his first race in the 125 class. Wow, what an ending to this first main event of the season. I told you that whoop section was going to get these guys. I thought... I really thought Gosler was going to have it, though. All he had to do was take it easy. He took it too easy. Travis Preston, who finished seventh in 2001, gets the victory. And he's joined now by Davey Coombs. Davey? What an unbelievable finish. Did you even know you got the win? Dude, this stuff happens to me all the time. Happened last year at Houston. I'm just out there riding, dude. I don't know what place I'm in. I just ride as hard as I can and stay on two wheels. And people crash, and I ride around them. So I just, I'm really, I had such a bad week before, hurt my wrist, hurt my arm. I can't believe this. Congratulations. Thanks. So Travis Preston gets the victory. Didn't know what place he was in, but rode well enough to get the checkered flag. Roderick Tain, a little bit injured as he walks off. James Stewart, a tough night, but he comes back to finish second. Back with more after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
a great race. Look Sports Update brought to you by Speed Pass at Exxon and Mobile. And this mobile update takes a look at the reigning champion in the 250 class, Ricky Carmichael, who absolutely dominated the Supercross circuit last season. Now, you might expect them coming into this year to do everything exactly the same way, right? Take the same approach. Not so fast. Last season, he rode a Kawasaki to the title. Now, he'll be steering a Honda. In this sport, that is a monumental change. They approached me last year before the season even started, you know, and they just said, hey, you know, we're interested in sponsoring you uh, for the year 2002. Uh, we just want you to know that before you even race 2001, regardless of how you do, you feel like you have good potential. A lot of people are kind of saying, well, you know, he might not like the bike or whatever, but, you know, he's not going to go from one bike to the other and, you know, all of a sudden get slow. He's an excellent rider. And, that's just how it goes. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that move by Ricky Carmichael? I made the decision because they have a lot of technology. They always have the latest and greatest things coming out. And I feel like it, it's a place where I can better myself. I need to take my career to another level. 2001 was a magical season for the first-time champ. Carmichael won 14 of 16 events, including the final 13. Those numbers tied Jeremy McGrath's records once thought to be unbeatable. I think that uh, it can be matched. I really do, honestly, believe in my heart that I can do that. I'm more than capable of, of matching it. It'd be really, really hard to beat it, but I think I could duplicate that season. Jeremy won 13, and then they said no one would ever do it again, and then I did. So it's about the record books now, or seeing how many championships or races I can win. It appears time is on Carmichael's side to break those records. The Florida native turned professional in 96 and just turned 22 years old in November. Carmichael takes the lead, incredible! This would be my sixth season I'm going on now, and it seems I can't believe it, actually. You know, it's like the time is flying by. You know, they say a 10-year career is great, and I'm already halfway there. It's unbelievable. Um, I think I'm burning a really, really high tempo right now and uh, it would be hard to keep that tempo up for 10 years but uh, I believe I got a, a good three to five more years of, of doing what I'm doing now uh, before I would totally get burnt out. The comparisons between Carmichael and seven-time champ Jeremy McGrath are no doubt inevitable. I think Jeremy is an awesome awesome racer. Uh, you know me and him are you know the two champions out there and, uh, I think we're a, a level ahead of, of some of the other riders. He wants to win as bad as anyone I've ever seen, you know. And, uh, you know, he's got great focus, and he has a goal, and he goes right after it. And Jeremy knows what it takes to win a title in a seven on the Supercross 250 title. So, you know, he's going to be there every 16 races. And uh, just seeing me beat him last year and, and him, you know, hiring a trainer like I did, and, uh, looking for some answers. He's uh, definitely given 110 percent. He wants to win and uh, the thing is I do too. And you look at the numbers on last season for Ricky Carmichael. What he did was incredible. 14 out of 16 events. That's how many he won including 13 in a row. He goes for number 14 here in Anaheim in a moment. Well, I wonder if Mickey Mouse is a Supercross fan. Just a couple of miles from here, Disneyland and the brand new California Adventure. The Mick will come right down the road over to Edson Field and watch the 250 main event. No question, one of the talented riders, most talented riders in Supercross hasn't yet quite met those expectations, but everyone expects him to be great at some point. The crowd on their feet here, getting set for the 250 main event and the great rivalry in Supercross to play out. Carmichael against McGrath. Now you see the 30-second card up. It's sideways. They'll have a minimum of five seconds before that gate goes. Carmichael sandwiched between Ezra Lust and Travis Pastrana. Better than 45,000 on hand as they are racing here in the 250 main event. The race for the Powerade hole shot. And number 12 was just edged out by Michael Byrne. Michael Byrne able to get the power eight hole shot. There he is, the youngster from Queensland, Australia. And right behind him, Villeman from France. 
So an international start here with the lead. Mikey Carmichael, there he is, number four, right behind the two leaders. Puts the pass already on Mike Brown, number three. Not the best start for Carmichael. That's the first time he hasn't got a whole shot that I can remember. Especially since he's been on the Honda. A much worse start, though, for Jeremy McGrath. Now McGrath, not among the leaders at all. A big jam up in the first corner. He broke free, but he's in about 15th place. Michael Byrne, number 35, ahead of David Billiman, number 12, and then Ricky Carmichael, number four. Carmichael could have chosen to wear number one this year as the champion of the 250 class. He elected to stay with number four. There's Billiman, who was injured last year. A couple of seasons ago, he had a great year. He had four wins in the 250 class, but he was out much of last season. This is getting tight. Carmichael is going to change the complexion of this battle up front. Those guys can feel his presence. There goes Ricky Carmichael, RC into second place. And he doesn't just make the pass, he swaps his way into second. He just, it was a good thing that hoop section ended because he was completely sideways, but like he has done a million times, he pulled it all together and made up time. This, by the way, is not only the opening round of the season, but the opening round of the Vans Triple Crown of Racing as Carmichael's in second place. This plus the race in Atlanta, February 23rd, Las Vegas on May 4th, if any riders wins all three, wins half a million dollars. As you look at Jeremy McGrath all the way back in 11th place. He's having a tough time trying to break, get through the pack. Because of the, the nature of the soil, the way it's gotten slick, this section right here, there's nowhere to pass. It's a, it's a one line deal. As soon as you get up to the whoop section, which they're approaching now, that's where you can pass. Jeremy looks like he picks up a spot. There's number five, Mike Loraco, making a move near the front. Morocco, who came in third of last year, always seems to be in the top three. Morocco is on the move. He's the fastest rider on the track. He turned a faster lap time than Carmichael that time by a second. He yeah. won one of the qualifying heats. Ricky won his heat. Morocco won his. Morocco has actually made time, disposed of the riders between himself and Carmichael. That's going to make Carmichael a little nervous. Nobody has been able to reel in Carmichael. There's number four just ahead of him. Morocco, the 30-year-old and a veteran from South Bend, Indiana. As you look at David Villeman, number 12. Villeman from France was out with a rib injury. It's Carmichael is ahead of Morocco now. A little bobble from Ricky. Got a little out of shape. Here comes Morocco. They go high into the air. Carmichael ahead of Mike Morocco. So much has been made, David, of the switch to Honda this year. Do you think Kawasaki to Team Honda for Ricky Carmichael adds any pressure? I believe he's going to feel a little pressure from just all the people that, that didn't really like the fact that he switched from Kawasaki. I don't think he needs to explain anything to anyone. He was with Kawasaki longer than anyone's ever been with a factory. Just wanted to ride something else. And he felt like since Honda hadn't won and since 96 with McGrath, that they were as desperate as he is to win. You look at our Honda stopwatch, the interval between first and second place. Bulliman with the slight lead over Ricky Carmichael through the whoop section. He's got a lot of pressure now from Larocco, and that's going to tighten up. Bulliman's going to feel that in a moment. And if Ricky doesn't win on this Honda, he, he might feel like he should. That's extra pressure, and it wouldn't make Honda look good if they grabbed a hold of Carmichael, who just dominated last year, and they still couldn't win. It's got to be in the back of his mind. Uh, I think if LaRocco were on a different color bike, that could have been it. And McGrath tangled with Mike Brown after the whoop section. Not a good night for the defending champion. McGrath way back in the pack as Carmichael goes high into the air. David Villeman still your leader, though. The seven-time defending champion, I should say. Ricky, of course, McGrath, the defending yeah. champion. Obviously hit his head. The visor's gone. LaRocco had nowhere to go. LaRocco's up and going, though. Still, it looks like LaRocco has been able to preserve fourth. But Ricky 
is in trouble. Lap five of 20 laps here in the 250 main event, and Ricky Carmichael, who has won 13 races in a row, in trouble. David he, Billiman still in the lead. He crashed in that exact same place in practice, Terry, and it took him a while to get up, but it wasn't this bad. So Billiman is just... Unbelievable. He's starting off like he started the 2000 season where he was able to run down McGrath. And Carmichael is still down as we take another look at what happened. He didn't get the front end high enough, just plows it right into the next jump. Morocco had nowhere to go. He actually came through that pretty lucky, though. Watch Ricky's head. Oh. Oh, I hate to see that. Morocco was actually a little bit lucky the way he just sort of stayed on the top of all that, floated through it, but Ricky took a Looked tremendous like he, impact. He rode right over his right ankle, did Morocco, and they continue to work on the reigning champion of the 250 class. Ricky Carmichael down, perhaps out of this race. David Filament continues to lead, but the story behind him the injury to Ricky Carmichael. Back in a moment. I can't stand looking at that thing. A father and son forced to work together could ruin the bond between two partners. Your kid don't belong in the middle. A new blue, then. How do you defend a boy whose reason for committing a crime... There has to be an explanation. ...is to destroy his own father. Judd Hirsch guest stars. Billy After Blue. New ABC Tuesday. Viewer discretion advised. You can't just go in and play an average game and expect to come out of the playoffs with a win. NFL playoffs start with a wild card doubleheader. Saturday on ABC. E8's brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross champion. Speed stick power of nature for protection that smells good. Yamaha, maker of fine motorcycles and ATVs. Nobody's more in tune with motorsports than Yamaha. And Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. The main event continues as you look at David Villeman, number 12 from France. He continues to lead, but good news here. Just moments ago, Ricky Carmichael was able to get up off the track and walk off the track under his own power. That's a good sign. Uh, what an impact he took. He was flying through the air. He just free fell right into the first whoop. Seemed to be favoring maybe his collarbone. He was holding everything pretty still on his left side. Looks like he had a little bit of a bloody nose, too, but after seeing him down on the track and in pain, it's good to see that he's up and walking. Well, this is the David Billiman that won the, the Bercy Supercross in Paris, France in December. He defeated McGrath to get that. The second time in a row he's won it. Look at his rhythm through the whoops. He had a lap rider that time. He wasn't able to get through there as clean as before, but he's actually found a rhythm through there. This guy is the master of picking the best lines and finding excellent rhythms through the whoop section. He's got a huge lead now, 11 seconds over LaRocco, who rebounded from that incident with Carmichael. Had to work his way back into that spot around Michael Byrne and Fonseca of Honda. Mention that win at Bercy in Paris for Villeman, which was a great sign because we talked about his injury last year. He had the rib injury after having a terrific season in 2000, and people wondered whether or not he would be able to come back and ride as strong as he had in the past, and maybe we've gotten the answer here. Get an update on the Carmichael situation from Davey Coombs right now. Davey? Well, fortunately, Ricky is in very good hands with Dr. John Bodner. He looks all right, other than a pretty nasty cut on the top of his lip. He's loose and he's wide awake. He kind of shrugged a few times. I'd say he's okay, maybe a little punch drunk. But uh, other than that, nothing looks like it's broke. Looks like just a very bad crash for Ricky Carmichael. Well, that's the most important news right there, but the streak is over. 13 in a row, and he matched Jeremy McGrath, but he will not beat it. And McGrath is in 13th at the moment. What do you think the story is with Jeremy McGrath? 
He just, he started off in the heat race, everything was perfect, and then he got tight. About lap five, his arms pumped up, the, the famous arm pump, it's a nightmare for the rider. The arms are just, you can't work the throttle or the clutch, and you basically are just surviving out there. And so, for the main event, that may have been on his mind, and even if it didn't happen, he got a terrible start. And then he collided with Mike Brown partway through the race, and he was all the way back in like 18th at one point. Right now, still in 13th place. You can tell by his posture that it's pretty disgusted, but the saving grace is that the guy that he's going after for the title is out. So he will, in a sense, have a points lead over Ricky Carmichael. Not the way that Jeremy McGrath wanted to get that points lead, though. As you look at number 35, Michael Byrne, Battle for third place, Burn, the 22-year-old from Queensland, Australia, who now lives in Minifee, California, same town as Jeremy McGrath. Right. Very impressed with Burn. This guy was just breaking inside the top 10 through last year's series. There's a block pass by Fonseca, factory Honda versus the Honda support team. Burn riding for LaRocco's team, so he won't be on the podium with his teammate unless he can get back around Fonseca. Ernesto Fonseca, the 20-year-old who's originally from San Jose, Costa Rica, now lives in California, but he won the West in the 125 class last year, so he's moving up. Their, their lap times were a little quicker than Villeman out front, but Villeman has such a lead, he can afford to cruise just a little bit right now. Very impressed, though, with these guys, both of them. Fonseca moving up. This is his first 250 Supercross ever. He's the only rider to ever win the East and West divisions of that 125 class. Yeah, won the East back in 99, last year the West. There's David Willeman, number 12, who is the current leader here in the 250 main event. Well, don't forget the exciting action from the NHL here on ABC Sports. Three great matchups, either the Rangers, Flyers, Blues, Penguins, Stars, and Red Wings. Saturday, live at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, right here on ABC. McGrath is about to be lapped right now by David Billman. That's the kind of night it's been for Jeremy. There he goes. He just lapped Jeremy McGrath. And this, make no mistake about it, this is Jeremy McGrath's house. When he was introduced here, the entire stadium, more than 45,000, he, he just couldn't hear it. And he had won. 10 races overall here at Anaheim. Eight in the 250 class, but he's just been lapped. Just shows that the start means so much in these races. He, he rode the U.S. Open race in Las Vegas in October. Couldn't seem to buy a start. Carmichael got him all. He won that. Jeremy came all the way through the pack from last to second, but he just isn't showing that kind of resolve here tonight. And McGrath really dedicated himself in the offseason. He wanted to be back. He wanted his title back, but he's struggling early on. Get another report from Davey Coombs. Well, look at this. Down in the infield, the last corner, another one of our contenders out of the race. It's Travis Pastrana. Travis has a problem with the front disc on his bike. Unlike Carmichael, he is not injured. But Pastrana's night almost going as bad as Carmichael's. All right, Davey, so the 18-year-old who won the title in the East last year, the 125, moving up, raced a little bit in the 250 last year, but mainly in the 125, so his season does not start the way he wanted it to. And it ended in the whip section about 25 yards past where Carmichael's race came to an end. How does Villeman look to you? I know he's leading, and he looks pretty good leading, but coming back off that injury. I'm just watching. You now his body English is excellent. He's able to pick, I already talked about his, his line selection, but the fact that he has such good body English, he can put the bike anywhere he wants. Watch him jump through these loops. A few there, a few out. The less you hit, the less chance there is it's going to catch that front wheel and get you all crooked and you have to let off the power but Villeman has been nicknamed the Cobra because of the way he coils all over the bike and uses that long frame great style a little bit goofy for some people but I really I've grown to like it hey if it works who cares what it looks like and it's right? effective right now LaRocco has really closed that gap white flag is out white flag the final lap here as David Villeman has the lead there's Jeremy McC Wrath. It has not been his night. Villeman ahead of Morocco, and Morocco has not won since 1995, but he's always near the lead. 
and he has been that way throughout this main event. Well, pretty impressive the way he survived that crash with Carmichael. If he hadn't have gotten collected with Ricky and had been following right there, he'd had a shot at Billiman here, but it's too late. Morocco is going to get close. But Villeman through the whoop section. Remember what happened in the 125 main event. Not this time. There'll be a new winner for the first time in 14 races in the 250 class. Paul Michael had dominated, won 14 of 16 last year, including 13 in a row. But it's David Villeman who catches the checkered flag in the season opener here in Anaheim. LaRocco able to come in second, but Villeman, number 12, winning round one of EA Sports Supercross in the 250 main event. Yamaha results, Villeman, LaRocco, and Ernesto Fonseca captures third place, moving up to the 250 class. A great finish for him and a great start to this year. And a great ride by Ezra Lusk, his first ride on a Kawasaki. Finishes out in fifth. So the story coming in, McGrath and Carmichael, Ricky Carmichael, could he break the 13 in a row record by McGrath? No. Down halfway through, back in a moment. Well, David, it looks like the Cobra of 2000 is back with a fantastic ride here at the opening night of the season. Yeah, I rode really good, and, uh, you know, I led the first few laps, and Ricky was behind me, I think. He crashed, and, uh, you know, the track was not easy today, and uh, it was kind of easy, but the woods were really, really tough, and uh, I think everybody had a uh, hard time into it. And uh, when I was leading, I was, like, uh, a long ways away, and I uh, just ride smooth and try to finish the race like that. The track is very slippery, so it was uh, easy to make a mistake, so I'm happy to be on top. You know, Yama did a great job, and I did not have a great season last year, but, you know, I worked hard and uh, with Jackie, and, uh, you know, it paid off, and I uh, just want to... Continue like that. Good job. Thanks. All right, Davey, we checked the Suzuki point standings, and Billiman picks up 25 points with the win. He's the only one, obviously, now who could win the half a million dollar bonus in the Vans Triple Crown. So that is the story from round one in Anaheim. We're with you next here on ABC Sports in Indianapolis on Sunday, February 10th, with round six. Check your local listings for the times. Until Ricky Blyer. He was great in the supporting role of the, the undersized but feisty sidekick. Mike Hegman gave new meaning to the term grand larceny in his role as the master thief, while Jackie Smith's drop pass extracted every ounce of pathos from the audience. All right, he's going to have to take the top of that off very quickly now to beat that time, and he may have done it unofficially. 38 seconds, Mitch Hewitt. Was looking to get under 39.22, and that could have been the chop for him. It certainly could have been, and Dale's keeping it going there because there's plenty of points to get yet. Well, there's the official time. Mitch Hewitt definitely the champion, 37.97. That's the sort of performance he wanted to show the folks here at Dollywood. Mitch, this is the first time we've had the opportunity to talk to you. What do you think of the setting and the, and the competition here in the U.S.? I like it a lot. Uh, it's a lot of fun shopping over here. There's a lot of different events, and... Uh, the competition is so unpredictable. Well, we have to ask you, what do you think your strong point is? Springboard's probably my best event, and even that, like yesterday, I only cut second, where I felt I should have, I have been beating David a lot, and uh, that's just how things go when the pressure's on. It happens. Okay, well, you had a great start today. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Well, as we look at that cut one more time by Mitch Hewitt, he does everything perfectly, and he does it so fast. Oh, he does, but in actual fact, Tommy, he was off balance when he turned to cut the back, so that time could have been even quicker. Mitch Hewitt is the champ of the springboard chop. Jason Winyard took the standing block, but David Bolstad with that win in the underhand, second in the two other chops, is your Carhartt chopping champion. Had a great time here in Dollywood. The next stop, the great Maine Lumberjack show in Trenton, Maine, some New England outdoors at its best. See you next time. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. The fans started arriving in San Diego early this afternoon as we get set for round two of EA Sports Supercross. And if tonight's anything like round one, hold on to your seats.
Last week in round one, the big two had big trouble, but these three each had big nights. Tonight, the champ, the former champ, and the future champ are each hoping for a big turnaround. Before an expected standing room only crowd, it's the second round of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speedstick. Hello everyone, I'm Art Ekman along with defending champion David Bailey. Well, it was quite an unexpected happening in the first round with the notables Jeremy McGrath, Ricky Carmichael, and the 250 rookie Travis Pastrana digging quite a hole for themselves. Well, I'll tell you what, they, are, they can't afford another hit like that in terms of the championship. Uh, I was talking to Tim Ferry after the practice session today. He didn't ride Anaheim. He's like, I'm in the hunt. I'm only two points behind Pastrana, one behind Carmichael. Now, the guy that really has an opportunity here to, to break away from Carmichael in his hometown is McGrath. The big question is, can his arms take it? It'll be interesting to see if the winner, David Villeman, and maybe like Mike LaRocco can hold on to their edge because the pressure is on them right now. But of course, the focus is always going to be on the defending champion, Ricky Carmichael. Everybody expected Ricky Carmichael to win last week, but nobody expected this. Not to mention a last place finish. As you saw last week, our defending champion had quite a crash. Ricky, what exactly happened and how do you feel? Well, I feel fine, and uh, what happened was I took a little bit different of a line after the tunnel there and uh, to get over that step up, and it kicked me over the handlebars a little bit. It was uh, totally my fault, you know. It was uh, just a little bit different line, and, and the, the takeoff of the jump was different, and, uh, man, I hit, hit the dirt hard, and, you know, that's the way it goes. I had a, a, a lot of luck last year, and uh, but that one bit me last weekend, and... My main goal tonight is is to make it to the night and get some points so uh, I feel, uh, you know, close to 100% next weekend. The champ is in a hole. He's got to pick it up here tonight in San Diego. David, take us through the speed stick track map. Well, here you got the start right down, and as soon as they come out of the first corner, right into a whoop section. Not as difficult as what we saw last week in Anaheim, but it gets these guys' attention right away. Let's go on board now with Keith Johnson. He takes us over the first triple jump, 65 feet through the air. See some loose soil starting to come up right there. That'll mess with you when you're trying to pick an exact line through the rhythm section here. He chooses the inside at the approach of the next triple. Because he doesn't have a run at it, he can only double. That leads you into these whoops right here, which are even bigger than those. And yes, yeah, so after you go over the finish line jump, you tuck back underneath and back into the first corner. We've got some great matchups. In our qualifying heats here this evening in San Diego in the 250s, round number two, as we take a look at LaRocco, Fonseca, Reed, Way, Roy, Hoffman, Lewis, Brown, Evans, and Pastrana. What do you think of that LaRocco Pastrana matchup? Could be good. Pastrana was reeling in LaRocco a little bit in the heat race last week, but he made a few mistakes. So there he is right there. Travis, talk to him after the practice session. He feels good. The boys sideways, we're ready to go for our first qualifying heat of the 250s. Great start by Pastrana and LaRocco. And the battle is on now with Sebastian Waugh. John Sebastian Waugh from Blackfoot Honda out of Canada is our leader with the first heat with Tim Ferry moving into second place. Travis Pastrana and Ferry LaRocco in fourth. Intensity right away. I thought Travis was going to get through that boot section and have an early lead, but here's Ferry. Ferry tests him on the inside, but Wall looks back at it. Oh, what dramatics now. Pastrana takes second place. A three way battle for second with LaRocco on the outside. So number 40 is Wall. Number 199 on the Suzuki is Travis Pastrana, who looked very fast in practice. He did. I think he had the fastest lap time unofficially. But he's got Ferry breathing down his neck right now, and LaRocco watching all of this, hoping they take each other out. I'll tell you, Ferry believes he was injured in practice, but by the start of the season, here is the lead change. Number 199, Travis Pastrana draws the cheers from this packed house here in San Diego. This is a busy technical track, and that's what suits Pastrana. He didn't get to the whoops on the start. He fixes it that time, and Ferry follows him. Great racing. Ferry, the block pass on Wall. Directly to the main event. The rest have to go to the semifinals. I can't think of a time that Travis got the whole shot on a 250, but it's nice to see him out in front, not have to fight through the pack. He's got clean sailing right now. He should be able to 
open up just a little bit of a lead, but then again, Ferry, even though he came from knee surgery, he doesn't appear to have any rust at all. He had that uh, arthroscopic knee surgery. They took some cartilage, about 70% of the meniscus uh, cartilage out of that, that knee, so he was able to come back and only miss one race. That's thanks to Jeff Spencer, who's also, from what I understand, helping Ricky Carmichael through this event. Jeff Spencer, of course, the trainer, clear back in the early 80s with Team Honda, and he helps Lance Armstrong with Tour de France. You see a yellow arrow near the name. 